everybody, it's Catherine and it's a new project time for Sewing Tuesday and another slow stitch project. So we've had a bit of a swap around. <laughs> we've moved the table a bit um, and so I'm facing the window now so that I can I go behind me to use my machine and you know while I'm filming or whatever uh, and I can get to my cubes and stuff with me things on the side so uh, bear with us we'll see how this goes we've had to shift the camera and everything around okay then so what have we got so I've created the hashtag for this so anybody that's on Instagram um, I'll leave the details down below I am Catherine underscore Pinkett and uh, the hashtag for this little project is hashtag heartfelt thanks heartfelt thanks two t's together so one t at the end of heartfelt and t for another t for the beginning of thanks and the idea behind this is um with the pandemic and everything um that's been going on over the last year um, many of us have had a lovely little acts of kindness towards us. Either it's been from a neighbour or, um, you know, if your family's not been able to come and see you, there's been other friends around that might have been able to help you. We've had help from um, certainly the uh, GP practice, the practice nurses that are doing the vaccinations. It might be somebody at the hospital that's done something special for you. It might be somebody from the community centre. Um, I think you get the gist. So I thought it would just be nice to uh, make a little bit of something with our slow stitch project using hearts and to make a little bit of something that's easy to fit in an envelope to be posted. Um, so this is the size envelope that it fits into um, or you can get a square one make your own or whatever so the pieces that we're using are five inches by five inches and that is 130 by 130 and these will easily fit in these envelopes which are usually a general card for greetings cards in the UK is is roughly seven and a quarter um, by five and a half um, and the project you know can easily be posted to whoever you want to send your heartfelt thanks to so I've created I'll shove that over there now I've created a template so as you know I've got templates that you can if you contact us by email we've got templates for uh, hexagon circles for the paper piecing and then now we've got a template for hearts now um, not all these hearts will fit which is that one it's just I've, I've cut that slightly less slightly less than I've got to get used to where my new middle is slightly less than that particular one so please let us know if you want uh, a template of hearts or you can just make it you know whatever size you want it doesn't have to be uh, any set size at all the idea behind it is that we're going to get a piece of a uh, I said a4 then uh, a five by five square and a five by five batting now again if you haven't got any you don't necessarily have to but the effect I'm after is a bit of a quilted bit of a quilted padded heart effect so and uh, so we've got that and then we have we cut the heart out or we could put smaller hearts on so you're not necessarily just have to do one heart you can put loads of little hearts on so there's a few different techniques that I'm going to be doing I think we'll do it for about five weeks so about five different techniques after today I'm just going to do some you know just some normal um, slow stitching and, and do some collage um, but I've done this piece to show you the back so I've got piece of I've got my piece of K 
calico or muslin I think you call it in the States I've got my piece of batting and then I've put on the back I've put um, I've cut out a square now this is and because it was my first I thought it'd be nice to do this is from the lovely um, handkerchiefs that Nola sent me in the happy mail that she sent me last year and I've cut this out and this is my backing fabric and then what I've done here so uh, you can have a write it on card or write it on material I thought it'd be nice to incorporate heartfelt thanks if you're sending it off to somebody um, and I've quilted this now I've done this with sewing machine quilting I've quilted it with the sewing machine should I say um, but next week for those of you that don't have sewing machines I will show you how to hand quilt um, your square so that you can still have that quilted effect if you want and it's just another uh, a variation you know we can all use the hand quilted if you want so basically I've got my two I've got my two layers got my two layers I chose my backing fabric so say for example I fancied that pink as my backing and quilt it before you then put your slow stitch project on the on the front of it um, because what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to decorate this oh, that's right so I'm going to decorate this and put my heart on it um, so that it will all be I don't want the quilting to come through onto my front design and it's easy enough always start in the middle of your project if you're quilting because quilting batting is, is notorious for shifting and stretching and doing weird and wonderful things so I just start in the middle and then work either side and if hopefully you can see from this it gives you uh, a nice bit of a quilted quilted feel now you don't have to have a piece of backing with it if you don't want you can just quilt those two together the batting and your backing fabric together and then um, you would put your clean your clean piece <laughs> you know what I mean a new square on top this is going to be the top design and I'm going to sew this slow stitch all this and then stick it on there or quilt it on there so I hope that makes sense please any questions or any queries or if it doesn't make sense please do ask um, either you can either send me by an email or in the comments down below so it's pretty straightforward really once you once you've done it a few times so you want a square of calico a square of wadding and a square of your backing fabric and um, then whatever bits and bobs you're going to put on your front okay so I've got that all ready and I'm going to use this now I wanted to use this because this is from a, from a, I always like to buy the uh, the antique well vintage or lovely bundles from Rachel at Roxy Creations because um it's just gorgeous material this is some old hemp i think so i've cut my heart out i've just put some lace that i got in my stash on the back there and i've got a few bits and bobs that i might want to use and put on there i've got so assortment of stitches uh, stitches stitching thread embroidery flosses I've got some silks as well and then you've seen these before when we did our other project I've got my little baggies of different different colored scraps that I might want to use um, I think it's more likely to be the sort of browns and beiges um, but we'll see just just seen some cotton that I would it's not the right size but say for example you've got a square of cotton that you wanted to uh, to use as your backing fabric then there's nothing to stop you you know putting some on and fraying the edges for that sort of effect if you wanted to I just spotted that because I've used it for that before 
Okay then, so I'm just going to have a um, st have a start at this. Now, I'm going to just stab stitch it on. Um, and I wanted also to put a little bit of this netting behind it. I want to just put a bit of that there. Pull it down a bit. I'm faffing now, but you can do, can't you? It's that's the beauty of slow stitching. You can have a bit of a play. No, no. I'm going to see if I'll do it like that. I did me. Uh, my tag for 52 handmade. I've not liked it this week. I don't like the tag that I've done. It's buttons, a bevy of buttons and I've got loads of buttons but I got this idea into my head that I wanted to do and then, you know when you get an idea in your head nothing else suits you then does it? Right, I've sort of cut some lace that I wanted to go on the top of there. There's my... Sorry, I hope I'm not getting my head in the way. You know, when you get used to the different way of working, that's a bodgy heart, isn't it? Look at that. Right, okay. So that'll do us for now there. Um, somewhere I wanted to hopefully have this bit in because it's from, this was a lovely uh, Devore, um, like a, a jacket and my, of my mum's. Uh, and she had some lovely velvet trousers in that chocolate and then this beautiful jacket um, uh, like all Devore and I thought that I would want that in there somewhere so I'm going to see if I can get that on there like that yeah and uh, we'll pin that in now then and I'll just stab stitch all that for now and then I'll finish it off like we did with the other. Anybody that's new that's not, um, that wasn't uh, participating in the last uh, sewing slow stitch we did, they're still there on the cards. You're more than welcome to go and have a look at the sort of things we did before. Um, yeah, I'm liking that can imagine that's on there. I've put a bit of a topper on um, so whoever send it to they might want to hang it up. Um, so because that topper's on also somewhere I want to put a bit of a rose, a bit of this somewhere. It may be that I'll put it in there later. So I've just got that all in place and We'll just decide on uh, some, something to stab stitch with. So I think I will use the fairly neutral silk. Um, and for those of you that uh, not heard me say before, I get these silk, uh, a lot of my linen threads and silk uh, palette threads from um, Airedale Yarns in Yorkshire. Um, So, how are you all doing? I know quite a few of you were excited, ready to start. This is like our first slow stitch Tuesday proper new project for this year. Um, I'm going to use this one because we're just stabbing. Let's see if I can get me. Th I should be able to get my thread through this. Oh, I've, I've sort of tidied some of my craft cubes out and. Uh, I started, uh, I've got dye all over me and all sorts, you know, when you get there and you think, why oh, have I kept this? It's, it's in a right mess, bits of, you know, old glue and old things where the lids have come off. <laughs> it was really good, I enjoyed doing it actually, I think it, uh, it makes you feel better to have a good clear out. Right, okay, so I'm just doing a stab stitch, just while we're having a chat. So it's just up and straight down again, again, more or less in the same spot. 
so it's just doing little stab stitches you don't necessarily want them to be noticeable you're just securing everything in place I mean you can do if you want you might want that part of your design um, so you can do that if you if you want so we're just going to work our way down and just do a series of little stabs so I hope you're all doing well got all your goodies ready I told you to get together a few bits and bobs of fabric scraps and uh, a selection of threads and needles and things ready so it's a matter of us all just sitting down again and having a having a nice peaceful sew to get girly sewing we've had a bit more snow here uh, overnight so uh, it's a bit more settled than it was it was um it was lovely earlier some of the kids had the, on the road they had the, those plastic sledges you know the plastic ones you can get because um, we're not a busy main road or anything like that so they uh, they were out doing a bit of sledging up and down the road which was nice nice to watch and of course Nelson wants to keep going in and out I don't think uh, he doesn't want to, he hates going out in the rain but he seems to like going out in snow so I've just watched uh, I don't know if any of you are participating in uh, Carol's tag swap um, this month for February Carol from Oak House Journal so she's just gone through um, picking out randomly picking uh, your partner for tag swap uh, so that'll be quite nice I just wanted I only wanted one one tag swap partner you could have a two or three um, but I've just got so much going on at the minute um, you know that'll just be enough so um, the reason why I've set up this uh, hashtag heartfelt thanks is so that we can all uh, display what we're doing all our hearts and see you know and also if you feel able to tell who share who that you're giving one of your heartfelt thanks to and why that would be nice I mean I've, I've got better at doing Instagram trying to post more things on there I've been posting my 52 tags um and a few other bits so if you're on instagram then sh share all your work with the hashtag heartfelt thanks and it'd be lovely to see what everybody's doing and i hope um i hope you like the idea of it originally I was going to do some bigger pieces because I thought um, we could do some bigger panels um, now I think this wants I think this wants moving up a bit about or else our hearts going to be off isn't it it's going to be off the edge I'm not sure if we can move it very far There, I can move it to there then it, at least it won't be it won't be hanging hanging off the edge as much should have thought of that shouldn't I it's a touch large it's a touch on the large side really this 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 ouch, this heart There's one thing about doing the filming in the afternoon that uh, the postman's been. The post is been, so we're not going to hopefully have people knocking and, and setting Nelson off barking. <laughs> oh.
so just stabbing away at this just so that uh, everything's in place so we're not I mean the other thing is if you don't want to do all these stab stitches is you can do you know just run um, big basting stitches along uh, tacking basting or tacking stitch and that would do it as well there's just something soothing isn't there I think of um, you know just just stabbing your needle in and out <laughs> probably that's just me I mean you don't have to do the padding you know you can just do a heart front and back or some people might decide that they'll do a front and back and, and stuff it with some you know with some uh, pillow stuffing uh, and make a little bit of a puffed heart to give to send to somebody um, you know the choice is yours it's uh, it's your project and I know that we had so much fun didn't we last time and uh, you know everybody was having a bit of a go um, the exciting thing was as well that we had the prompts where we didn't quite know what we were what the extras were going to be every week did we um, this one I'm, I'm sort of going to show a few different techniques um, but I've been thinking of uh, other projects in the future where we can have the prompt jar back again because we had so much fun we had so much fun didn't we on December dailies with the prompt jars where you were all you know all sending me your your prompts um it was good fun we enjoyed it so I'm thinking something along those lines yeah so I was thinking about something along those lines so perhaps do um, a collage a month um, where we will use say three prompts that you send in like we did with the um, I'm trying to thread this and talk at the same time like we did with the December dailies um, so we'll probably start that in next month in March um, so start sending your prompts in for a collage all sorts of different things that can be prompts to do with um, what media we use this this heart shifting further and further that way isn't it and I've gone over the top of this that I didn't want to because it's my mum's I'm too busy talking right I'm going to take that out again sorry um yeah so start sending your prompts and um I'll gather them up put them in the old prompt jar watching what I'm doing am I uh, and then we can do that and uh, I think that would be different so I mean whatever you want to do your, your collage on you know you might just do it in your journal you're making or um, perhaps as you've already seen when I did the uh, the January challenge from Jovi um, I've just shoved together an old National Geographic and I'll leave that out just in case I'll take this out um, and you know I'm quite enjoying doing it there's something a bit freeing about it I think doing collage that way and using you know just three nice prompts from other people uh, might be, they might prompt give you the prompt that you would never have thought of using yourself that's what I liked about the December dailies um, and also it gives you guys chance I'm making a pig's ear I'm making a right pig's ear aren't I 
Um, let's see. It's very hard to talk. Talk, concentrate. So, think about what I want to say. <laughs> oh, it's there. Right, we've got it off. I'm going to stab that down first because... What we got there? There we go. So start doing that, and I can gather those up. So that'll be nice. Right. Okay. I'm just going to trim this off slightly because. It's a bit too near the edge, so I'm going to modify it slightly. That's it. It's a good job that sometimes I do things wrong and then, you know, there's always a way around it, isn't there? If we do things wrong, there's always a way to rectify it. And everybody, everybody does things wrong at some time or another. Right, okay. I'm just going to stab this in place so it doesn't move again. I noticed... Uh, there was a, a nice video I watched the other day, Tracy Fox uh, was doing some, that's better, um, was making her own stamps with rubber, rubbers, erasers, um, and that was fun. We used to do that at college and uh, um, I'm bringing out another series, um, may start it next week. Um, and we're going to be doing different backgrounds for stitch. So I have a backgrounds for stitch, backgrounds for edgings, journal edgings. Um, but they can, you know, the backgrounds for anything really. You could use them for your covers or pages in your journal, whatever. So we're going to be having a play doing some mark making and messing about with shapes and different colours and stuff and see what, what ideas we all can come up with. And uh, I've noticed uh, that Rachel's doing a hundred, she's not doing the hundred day project, but she's doing messing about with collage or something like that it's called. I'll look it up and tell you next time. And uh, I saw that and I thought, oh, that's a bit like what I was wanting to do for me, you know, um, for this background for Stitch. Um, and we'll have a play with that and that's another reason why I was I was having a, a, a sort out today because I thought right let's have a look at what uh, if I've got any paints left and um, wax crayons we're going to be messing about with and we'll do some effects with wax um, we'll do some trapunto probably we'll do some uh, scra scraffito um, I'll just have a good old scribbling time. So um, yeah, just something a bit a bit different for a change. Um, because I think that you know it doesn't. You can put anything in your journals. Then once you've got the skills, once you know all different sorts of techniques and ideas. Now uh, that's better. The other thing is that you start to get a bit as well with the stabbing. You can get a little bit of a, a quilted feel to it as well because don't forget you've still got your um, you've got your wadding down in the middle of all this. So it uh, you can't always see it on camera, but it's. Uh, it's got a little bit of a puffed effect. Right, I'm going to stab these down. This is some of the trim. You, you may well have seen it before. It comes like as ribbon trim and it's been in some of the packs I've sold. And then you can uh, 
uh, pull it out and make this netting. This has been dyed with some avocado, I think, with some, even with some avocado paper that they would do. <clears throat> so we'll just stab that down a bit. Oh, and then the other big news I'd forgotten to tell you. David and I have had our vaccinations. Woohoo! Um, there was an advert in the paper that uh, ran here. They were on to the 70, uh, 72, 8, 79 age group, um, which obviously we're not, but, uh, and also clinically clinically vulnerable the people that have been shielding so that's us so they said to um, not wait for your appointment turn up at the rugby club on Sunday morning um, we had to take papers to, to show that we had been shielding and um, yeah very well organized um, I mean I think the rugby club's an ideal place um, you know because it was all set out and two different entrances so you came in one entrance and out the other so people weren't mixing you know you got your masks on it was all marked out on the floor where you had to stand so everybody was in the proper social distancing um yeah very well organized um i wouldn't hesitate uh i know some people are a bit dubious about it and uh you know everybody has to make their own decisions but i think um because we had a press conference last night and uh you know government press conference and i think they were like saying please you know don't be afraid of getting your jabs there were some people apparently now there's a lot of fake news in the media and um they were saying oh well you know what's point in having the jab now because if a new variant comes along you'll have to have another jab again and you know all things like that and, and in actual fact that's they did reassure people about that and every year we have a new vaccine for flu you know we david and i have had it for a few years because as i say we're in this clinically vulnerable group um and they alter it every year because that's the nature of the beast that uh, they do have new variants so um i know somebody was asking Um, somebody was asking about, um, I know there are quite a few people that are concerned, they say they've made it too quickly. Um, they still have to go all through, I mean I used to have a lot to do with clinical trials and they still have to go through, jump through hoops, you know, to pass the safety and the efficacy of these things. I mean the reason why they've, they've managed to do it so quickly is because they've had loads of money thrown at them. To, to be able to develop it quickly and um, they've been able to test hundreds of thousands of, of, of people around the world to get their numbers because um, the clinical trials go through stages and um, you know they've got to have meet certain criteria of how many people that are in the trial and the data before it can be passed on to a stage three trial which is the like the last trial before it's uh, passed um, and you've got to have a lot a lot of people hundreds of thousands of people and their data um, to be able to show safety and how effective it is and under normal that's why it takes so long as well because under normal circumstances um you know the 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 scientists are underfunded and they not always have access to hundreds of thousands of people uh, to get the data whereas because of the nature of of what this covid's been um you know governments have put a lot of money into the research and they've you know they've had a world world full of population to to try 
so that's why they've been able I think it's marvellous I, I really do I take my hats off to the scientists I think they've done an amazing job and also you know to how how they're managing to roll out the vaccine programs I know um, not everywhere is up to speed yet but everywhere you know around the world but it'll get there and I think um, I think I was reading that uh, um, Israel I think Israel is one of the top countries for um, for get, rolling out the vaccines at the moment um, they're going great guns there so um, yeah so I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate um, we were thrilled that you know they'd said you can go if you've been shielding um, and we were pleased I mean yeah you get my arms I mean we felt a bit rough we felt a bit rough for a day or so my arm our arms are hurting but I mean that happens when we have the flu vaccine every year feel like you've been kicked by a horse for a few days um, and I've got to go off at the end of this month and go and have a load more tests and things um, and so really I'm really glad I've already been in hospital once worrying about picking something up so you know I don't want to be back there again so at least um, it'll be three weeks off so uh, I should have uh, got some sort of immunity so it's a bit oh, tangled this up so yes yeah, so that's the big news we were really pleased um we could go um and and that's the sort of thing and, and you know and i i made a big thing of so i don't really think i'm being pious but i made a big thing of thanking people because they don't have to do it they've got loads of volunteers it was snowing and awful and they got loads of volunteers in the car park showing you where to park and then there were people saying did you need you know like because David uh, has to walk with his crutches since he had his stroke and you know people were, were coming up and it was really heartwarming there were young men coming and saying would you like any help do you need a wheelchair do you need anything um, and they didn't have to you know they didn't have to stand in the snow like that um, and all the people that and I've done vaccinations and I'll tell you that if you're normally doing them at 50 a day um, your arm sure hurts when you've done that many and they're doing hundreds I mean I know one of our practice nurses when we had the normal flu vaccine back in just before about November time uh, by 12 o'clock 12 midday they'd done 150 each you know that's going some and I bet that you know they're doing those sorts of speeds again with uh, with this vaccine so people are always moaning aren't they and groaning not enough people say thank you I don't think so um, I just said thank you very much for, you know for your time and uh, had it not been for the fact of all these health problems uh, you know I'd have been going and doing some vaccines um, So that's that bit. Um, yeah. Something quite soothing about doing this stabbing stitch. I don't do it very often, but. I'm, it's, I don't know, you can, look at, you can pick up a pace, can't you? I mean, if you want, you don't have to do any slow other stitching stitches on it. Um, I mean, I'm going to do, but you don't have to, do you, really? Do you think that'll do us? Are we, are we secure enough at that? Let's have a look at this bit, how much of that we got there. Oh, not bad at all. Not bad at all. So I will leave it at that for you. Um, 
I don't know how long we've been talking, um, but I've got to a bit of a, a natural impasse now, really, with this. So it's coming on. <laughs> After my original faux pas, I shall have to. Uh, I'll have to put this somewhere different. Perhaps may well have it round there. Yeah, I might have it round there. In fact, let me just pin that in place just so I can get an idea. Um, we'll see. I might not even want that on. It detracts a bit, doesn't it? I can always put it on something else. Yeah, we'll see. Might go there. I'll pin it on and I'll have a think about it for a bit. So, thank you as normal for joining me. Um, hope you're going to join in with this this uh, project. Have a little think. I think my pins are getting blunt. Have a little think about. That's blunt. Have a little think about uh, who you're going to send them to. And uh, don't forget the hashtag heartfelt thanks and put that on Instagram and so we can have a look at your project. So thank you very much for joining me. And uh, yeah, see you later. Bye for now.